Steve Teal, Very Bold Radio and Podcast, talking to a guy who this is not, I'm not saying he's my friend, but we, <laughs> I feel like he's a friend because about a year and a half before the pandemic, it was it was coming and quarantine was coming and life was changing. But we had a great conversation about his last album for We Are Messengers. We're going to be talking to Darren Mulligan for a few minutes today. And I was just blessed. We just talked about, man, a lot of things about his album and about just kind of the need for kind of some grit in uh, the Christian man's faith and in music. And Darren brings that and a bunch more, man. He's got the grit. He's got the greatness. He's grounded, all those things. And I just want to remind you before we say hi to Darren, and we're going to talk for a few minutes, magnify. Everything Comes Alive, Maybe It's Okay, all these amazing songs. He's got a brand new album again, so I want to talk to him a little bit about that. The album is wholehearted, and he's also on tour coming to Corpus Christi this Saturday at the Selena Auditorium, and I'm going to the beach. My wife and daughter and I are going, and we're going to have an awesome time. Newsboys are there, Mandisa, We Are Messengers, Cade Thompson. It's going to be incredible. Let's say hi to Darren Mulligan. How are you? I'm good. I'm good, Steve. You know, and what your listeners won't know unless I tell them is that we just started our morning by you praying for me. And uh, you talked about you don't know if we're friends. Well, we're friends because only friends would pray for each other first thing in the morning, you know, and mean it and <laughs> yeah. be intentional. So yeah. we are friends. And thank you for having me again. Well, man, I really appreciate it, Darren. And uh, you are a blessing to me. And you've already blessed me. Uh, in fact, just uh, you know, talking about just some good things going on in your life and uh, kind of in- encourage me. I don't know if we'll talk about that or not. That was not my intent of asking what I could pray for and celebrate <laughs> with you. But uh, man, you are coming to Corpus Christi and we're excited about that. But it so happens that you've got this new album, Wholehearted, and people have been hearing the song, Come What May, um, Wholehearted, God You Are, Friends of Friend of Sinners, Million Miles Away. Um, in the few minutes that we get to talk to you, man, where do you start with this album? Where do you start with this 18, 19 <laughs> months since we've talked and everything changed? Yeah. Talk to us, Darren. Yeah, well, I guess that's true, Steve. Everything changed in a way. And um, I took some time to reevaluate my life, to reevaluate mm. how I was living, to reevaluate why I do music, why I travel 130 days a year to share. Um, the news of Jesus, because it's very easy to say, well, I do it to share the news of Jesus. I also do it to put food on kids' backs. Um, and I guess pandemic led us into a season where everything we had was shaken. Yeah. And then we really ha- had to wrestle with uh, our, our faith and our doubt. And we had to decide whether we were following Jesus because he was beautiful or we were following him because he gave us good things. Wow. And, uh, and me and my family, I didn't run into writing straight away. I took three months off. I didn't do anything. Just hung out with my family. Yeah. Um, because I, did, I didn't want to write words in no way to them. I didn't want to say things for the sake of saying them. Or yeah. saying them because I should. And uh, so in that time, we reevaluated and went home to Ireland for a little bit. And we had the choice to come back to America or to stay in Ireland and and kind of commute back and forward and do what I do here. Yeah. Um, America. So for the first time in our career, we had a choice. We could choose where to live. Yeah. And we chose America because these are the people that God has sent us to. And we started to write. And in this season, we decided that the wholehearted love of God, we had to be a reflection of that. And so we had to give ourselves wholeheartedly to America in the season that God has called us to be here. And we had to, when I say we, specifically me, I had to start discipline. Yeah. I had to learn to control my tongue, learn to uh, constrain my tongue, to control my eyes, to to um, censor what I hear, what I see, so wow. that I could be a man who walked in the fullness of grace. And what I've realized through the process of making the record, writing these songs, is that the kindness of God has come upon me in such a way that I go to bed without shame in my life. Mm. And I wake up without shame in my life. And because of that, we have become a very dangerous band once more. (laughs) There's power power in what God is doing. Yeah, uh, 
I love it. And so we've written the most honest record we could. And I will finish with this, Steve, before you ask another one. No, keep going. Uh, I Keep going, wife, man. I love what you're talking yeah. about. My wife asked, you know, she said one day I was driving a couple of months back, she said, is this the last record you're ever going to make? Whoa. And, uh, and I said, I said, I don't know. I said, but I wrote it in a way that if it was the last record I'd ever make, I could sleep well at night knowing I told the truth. Wow. Uh, and so I don't think it is by any stretch, but I want to do things with excellence, and I think this is an excellently crafted record that's honest, it tells the truth, it doesn't hide. And I'm already seeing thousands of messages coming in from all over the world. There was a cool photo yesterday, Steve. A lady sent in a picture of her arm just riddled with goose pimples. Oh! As she was listening to the record. And I, I just sent, sent a note back saying, that's the visible, tangible presence of Holy Spirit. Yes. That's what I want. I want to see yes. my life first and then the people that listen to this record. Oh, my gosh. That is awesome and exciting. Okay. There's so many questions in so few minutes, which is okay. Um, you know, I know you've got a, a busy day and other interviews. But let me ask you first, I, I want to ask you about that discipline because maybe that's going to encourage me. Maybe that's someone yeah. going to encourage someone else listening. How did you develop this discipline? Talk to us if you can. <laughs> uh, by, by saying no to my desire, um, I've often prayed and asked Lord, the Lord to remove my mental desires. Yeah. And the problem was that I never implemented his answer. He's already given me the scriptures and I was relying on a second-hand faith. I was relying on podcasts and sermons and reading and music and all of these things. Yeah. And the truth is that faith comes by hearing and hearing through the Word of God. Mm. And so I can only be disciplined when I'm eating the Scriptures. Otherwise, I'm relying on my own wisdom, other people's wisdom and strength. Yeah. And I find that when I say no to sin and yes to God, the, the amazing thing is, for the first time in my walk as a Christian, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not struggling to say no to sin. I'm not struggling to say yes to God. Oh. That God has actually given me new desires. Yeah. And it's a phenomenal thing to see the Scriptures at work in a man's life. Um, I did once, many years ago, but I'm seeing it new again. And I, and I feel like I've been born again, again. And so it's, it's a thrilling thing for me. Man, that, that is a thrilling thing. And it's for you, it's about that word of God instead of that second hand? Yes. Wow. Man, that is, that is really powerful. Okay, man, let, let me just back up for a second and just say, why was it that your wife was saying, is this the last record you're going to make? I mean, does that mean there were conversations? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question, Steve. And let's, let's take five more minutes. Okay, right? great. Five. Thank you. I'll tell you why. Um, this is not the right analogy. But in the scriptures, we see Jonah wanting to go to a city called Tarshish. Yes. Um, and we see God wanting Jonah to go to Nineveh. Yes. Um, I got to start just by saying the people of America have been incredible to me. We love these people and we love this country. But in a way, America is Nineveh to me. Mm. I, nev I never wanted to be here again. I, I have a family and people I love so deeply at home. Yes. And we've, we, we have lost seven years with them to be here. Wow. You now, we've gained, gained so much from being here. Um, sure. But my desire is not fame or applause mm. or acclamation. My, my desire is to stand in a field digging holes, planting potatoes, in our little cottage in the hills in Ireland. Wow. That's my, that's my Sabbath. Yeah. But the Lord asked me to come to America very clearly, and he's asked us to remain here. And so there was some discussion about that. Uh, should we go to Tarshish? And yeah. as always, we promised God 13 years ago, we said, God, we'll go wherever you want us to go and do whatever you want us to do. Mm. And so the Lord has cashed in on that check that we wrote with our mouths and our hearts. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and, uh, and so 
<laughs> we do it. And it's not, it's not, again, it's the wrong analogy. It's not quite Nineveh, but it is just, there's somewhere else I'd rather be. Yeah. Because that's who I am. I'm an Irishman. I'm from the ground. I'm from the dirt. I'm a blue collar working class guy. Yeah. And to be, to be a musician is still an alien thing to me, to make a living doing this. Wow. Um, but it, it, I will say it's also been the greatest privilege of my life. Yeah. And when I, when I see how America has taken us to be part of their family, it's a beautiful thing. So, yeah, we had the conversation. We definitely did. And we do it often. You know why? Because yeah. we, we never want to be holding things so tight that the Lord cannot take them from us. Yeah. Because what he has is better. It's always better. And in doing that, I kind of segue back and do yeah. that. He's given us the best record we could ever have written. He's just given us songs that I want to sing every night. He's given us new words. He's given us new visions. And I'm going to cry saying it. Yeah. And he has forgiven, he has forgiven me. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. And so I will go wherever the Lord asks. That's it. Yeah. Man. All right, that was an emotional moment for you just talking about that. That tells me this is real. Mm. Yeah. Nah, I got nothing to pretend anymore. I'm too old, Steve. <laughs> like, you know, I was talking to someone the other day. The album sounds phenomenal. And yes. I say that without arrogance. I say yeah. that with uh, confidence, knowing the time and energy over a year and a half that we put into it. Yeah. But we didn't want to make a cool album. Like, there's nothing... Some of it's quite ordinary sounding, but it's the truth and the melody that really carries it. Yeah. We didn't want we didn't want to be cool. We didn't want to be trending. We yeah. didn't want to be fashionable. We don't want to be anything other than what it is God has called us to be, because that thing, that's where the magic is in being fully yourself inside yeah. the fullness of God. And that's where men become dangerous again in that they Ugh. can love well, they can withstand sin. They can love the underdog. They can protect those around them. Yeah. And in a society that tells men to stop being too manly, yeah. when you follow God, you can be both tender, kind, and furious, and strong. Yeah. It, 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 it is a way to be both. And so we wanted to write a record that would allow men to feel that and women to feel that we actually have been sitting in the tenderness of God. So I think it encapsulates a, a big, wide experience. Oh, man. Well, you have made a beautiful and great album, uh, ironically. I mean, you know, you're talking about, and I'm I'm so glad you're proud of it. I mean, there's no better feeling than to do something and know you've done it well, and you've done what God has put on your heart, and it just so happens it's, a, it's an incredible album. Um, you talk about, this is important to you, being dangerous. Can you just talk a little yeah. bit more about that? Uh, so the scriptures talk about... Uh, the modern church, the Western church, we'll put it that way, yeah. having a, a, a form of godliness oh. that lacks the power of God. And so, for so too much in my life, I've had a form of godliness, the appearance of godliness. But really, my life uh, was an empty tomb, a whitewashed tomb, an open grave. My throat was an open grave. Yeah. And so, when you're walking in the ways of God, you don't just have the appearance of godliness. You have the very power of God yes. living and indwelling within you through Holy Spirit. Yes. And that power allows us to be dangerous towards the gates of hell. Yeah. You see, we know the scripture, you know, that, you know, we'll be camped at the gates of hell and the gates of hell will not overcome us. Yeah. Right? Yes. And that's my idea that we should be dangerous to the kingdom of hell. Yes. That's what we should be dangerous towards. We should be as gentle as doves and wise as serpents. And if we're going to do that, Steve, yes. we need to start standing for things. We need to start standing for the unborn. We need to start yes. standing for single mothers who are wrestling and struggling. We need to sit with widows and orphans, the poor, the prostitute, beggars, the outcast, immigrants, the thieves. Yes. And I have to do that, not just sing about it. Yeah. And the problem with men... When you have charisma like I have, yes. I know I have charisma. I yeah. understand that. Yeah, you can you can hide behind that and never do a darn thing to change the world around you. 
Wow. I am determined. Yeah. Determined to have character that is greater than my calling because it's been the wrong way around for way too long. Wow. So I am determined that that is where I'm going. Oh my gosh. So what is that going to look like? <laughs> uh, A, it's going to look like the scriptures. Yeah. Investing in the scriptures. Uh, B, it's going to look like saying no to sin today. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, C, it's going to be doing the next right thing every time I get an opportunity to do the next right thing. Yeah. Right? It's going to be a very practical, grounded faith. I'm not going to talk about fairies in the clouds. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to hang out with human beings and do the best I can to be like Jesus. That's it. It's not complicated. Yeah, that is, that is really, yeah, not complicated, but very powerful. Wow. Well, Okay, um, I've taken more than enough time. I could talk to you for another <laughs> half hour, another 40 minutes, but I know somebody somewhere is waiting for you to call them for the next interview, Darren. Yes, sir. So, well, thank um, you, Steve. No, Darren, thank you. This is, uh, man, that was just powerful what you shared because I know it came from the heart, and uh, it just seems like God is doing a completely new thing um, in your life and you're just open, open to it and vulnerable to it. And in that vul vulnerability, you are more dangerous to the kingdom of darkness than ever, which makes your music yeah. more dangerous than ever. And because your life, it's going to, it's just qualitatively going to be different. That anointing that he has given you to sing and to minister and to challenge people is just going to go the next level, man. I am amped and I am pumped. Wow. Th thank you. And and I receive all those things you just said. Uh, I would also acknowledge that because I'm in that place where new wine has been put in new wine skins. Yeah. But I also know that the devil, uh, I don't want to cry saying it, but I know, I know he seeks to kill me, to destroy me. Um, but I would say this. Yes. That he has had many opportunities to do so. Yes. And it is the kindness of God and the hand of God that has constrained his power. Yes. Um, so that the power of God might be made more evident through a sinner's life like mine. Yes. And the transformation from saint to sinner takes a lifetime. Mm. And I'm glad, I'm glad that I woke up this morning and I had air in my lungs because I get another chance to say yes, yes. To, the, to the only one who has ever really understood me, and that's the king. Wow. So, Man, that's so anyway, powerful. I got a roll, Steve. Yes. Darren, uh, thank you so much. That was incredible. And off air, I'll let you go, but I'm going to be praying for you specifically just for that further protection. And thank you so much, Darren. We'll see you Saturday night. Come on. And I mean, Steve, I mean, uh, you're one of the best interviewers in the country. You really are astonishingly good. Oh. Well done. Thank right. you so much. What a blessing. What a blessing. Thank you so much, Darren. I, I really take that to heart. Thank you. All right, bro. See you, uh, Steve. All right. Steve. See you Saturday. Can't wait. Yes, yes sir. All Thank right. You. God bless you, man. Wow. That is incredible. That is incredible. Darren Mulligan. I cannot wait to see him Saturday. I mean, it's going to be amazing anyway. Um, uh, but I would go just for We Are Messengers, just there. I mean, he, he is so gifted and talented. But then just to talk about this new stage, um, new new phase of what God is doing. And I want to do that, too. And it starts with the Word of God. Uh, man, that just, that just fires me up. So Darren Mulligan, We Are Messengers, Saturday, Corpus Christi, the Selena Auditorium. Um, we're going to the beach. We're going to have a great time, great road trip. But... We're going to walk into the presence of God. Would you do me a favor? Because I am going to pray off air and off camera for Darren and for his protection and for what God is doing in this new season. But would you also pray for him? And uh, would you pray for his family? Um, you know, 130 days out of the year on the road, that's hard. Would you just pray for them and understand that, man, in this new phase and new step where he is, that de the devil is going to continue to try to come after him. Can you just see his new, stronger faith? Um, and he was strong enough before, so would you just pray for him as we go off air? I'm going to do that again just privately. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. 
I hope you'll join us at Corpus this Saturday. going to be incredible. And not just this Saturday, I can't wait to see what God continues to do through Darren. Man, he had so much wisdom, so many pearls, but it was straight from the heart. So um, I want to remind you, it's, it's because of this hope. When you realize how much God has loved you, how much Jesus has forgiven you, how Jesus dying on the cross for you, that was for you. Can you just think about for a second, man, we... We don't want to go to bed in shame. We don't want to wake up in shame. We understand that Jesus felt and took all that shame for us on the cross. Jesus took and felt all that guilt on the cross. Jesus felt and took all the wrath of God, the disappointment of God, any judgment of God on the cross, and he just offers it to us. And we want to walk in the freedom and the light of that, but we want to stay. We want to renew our mind in God's word. We want to be transformed, the renewing of our mind in God's word and together, together as I'm encouraged by Darren, I hope you are. And you encourage me as you seek God's face, the beauty of his face, what Darren said, not what he can give, but the beauty of who he is. He loves you so much. His mercies, tender mercies are new today for you. All right. Wow. Darren Mulligan, We Are Messengers, the new album, Wholehearted. You got to listen to that too. I'm, I'm serious. Come what may. Now it's our turn. I haven't even talked about all the songs, but the, it's great. Um, the hope that he has, that Darren has, is, is the hope that I have. I hope that it's the hope that you have because Jesus has loved so well. And we say because of that, what the Apostle Paul wrote. Therefore, from 2 Corinthians 3.12, he said this, Therefore, since we have such a hope, we are very bold.